So if you've been working for quite some time with your airbrush, creating your artwork, you've probably noticed that there's all sorts of things that happen after a while of painting. Some of these things are tip drying, you can have issues with a flared line, or your airbrush isn't spraying directly where you are holding it. In this video, I wanna talk about what's in this front section of your airbrush. It's known as the fluid nozzle, and yes, it's super small, but it can definitely help you out with keeping your airbrush performing at its best, and I'll share some tips on how you can do that in this video. Now, now this brush here, the Awada Eclipse, the HPCS, is definitely a very popular brush for beginners as well as seasoned artists. It's a fantastic brush that can allow for broad spray as well as fine detailed work. But this one has a bit of a different nozzle setup. So I'm going to come back to this airbrush at the end of the video and instead I'm going to hook up my PS289 GSI Creos, which has a similar nozzle setup to a lot of other airbrushes. First thing you want to do is remove the air cap and something that I really like using is the Awada cleaning mat whenever I'm pulling apart my airbrush because it does definitely stop your parts from rolling away. So you can go check out this product, it's super helpful. I'll have some links in the description below to products that I'm using within this video. You can see it is very well used. It's got like a non-slip backing and this lip which is really helpful just so it's a little bit clearer to see what I'm actually doing. I'm going to have the mat to the side and I'm going to put my parts on there but I urge you to have it underneath when you are pulling apart your airbrush brush just so that if you drop something it's going to be caught by the mat. So once you've taken your air cap off remove the handle, loosen your locking nut, you don't have to completely take it off and then you can pull your needle out. Once the needle has been removed you're safe to remove this nozzle housing and now you're able to see the nozzle and how fine that is. Now with pretty much every airbrush that you buy you're going to receive this little tool here to remove your nozzle. I highly recommend that you don't use it. The reason being is that it works where you put it on the side and then moving in this direction or do it carefully and then you can unscrew your nozzle like that. It does work but be very careful when using it especially when you go to re-tighten it because if you over tighten it what will happen is you'll snap the thread and then the thread of the nozzle is going to be in there and this part's going to snap off. You can either take it to a um, watchmaker or someone like that to remove it. There is also nozzle removal tools that work fairly well depending on how badly your nozzle thread is jammed in the housing. So now to re-tighten I just move it until I can feel it grab and then just give it like a quarter turn and that's enough. A much better tool to use is the Awada nozzle wrench and this will fit most brushes with this smaller nozzle setup. So using the nozzle wrench now to unscrew the nozzle, you place it over the front. You can see it's got that little groove there which will catch. So just turn it until it catches and then carefully unwind it. And the other good thing is it holds the nozzle in the tool so that you're less likely to drop it and lose it. Now you may be able to make out that little bit of red around the thread. That's just for a sealant. So you can also use beeswax for this. Works really well. Just only put a little bit on the thread and then screw it back up. And what this will prevent is any bubbling back. And you can see how tiny that nozzle is. So you definitely don't want to drop it in your studio. Now to screw it back on, find the thread. I sort of go anti-clockwise first to find it. And then once you think that you've got it in the right position, start screwing it in. It shouldn't have any resistance and you shouldn't feel it sort of even screwing together. It should be very, very easily done. Then you know that you haven't cross-threaded it because that's also a very easy thing to do. If you're not sure about using this to find the thread, you can also use your finger. That works really well. And you want to make sure it's snug enough. If you're getting bubbling within the cup, a lot of the time it comes from the nozzle. Okay, so what's happened is it hasn't been tightened up or the beeswax is failing. So I've deliberately loosened this now and I'll show you what happens. So so now with that nozzle really loose, you can see I'm pressing down for air and I'm getting bubbling back. So usually that's the cause of it. Always check the fluid nozzle, make sure that it's completely tightened. And if you have tightened it and it's still happening, then I would remove the fluid nozzle and just put some beeswax on the thread and that should fix the issue. The reason it's bubbling back is because you're getting reverse air pressure because we've got leaks. So it hasn't sealed properly and this obviously is going to stop you from painting. One thing I did notice is that the Creos, you really have to have a gap there for it to be playing up. Whereas the Awada seems to be a lot more finicky and just a small gap can definitely cause your bubbling issues. You can see now all tightened up, no more bubbling. And I pull back and I'm getting product coming out. In this case, it's just reducer, just to illustrate what's going on. 
Okay, so before I show you the fluid nozzle setup on the Eclipse, I'm just gonna go back over a few things that can cause the bubbling like I just showed you. One is obviously if it's not sealed correctly and you may need some beeswax on the thread, the air will escape and cause the back bubbling. Another thing that can cause bubbling is that the fluid nozzle is flared or split. This occurs a lot in the HPCN Neos. So generally when those nozzles are split, you'll need a new nozzle to fix the bubbling issue. Whereas on some of the other brushes, the Eclipse and Revolutions and that, you won't always need to buy a brand new nozzle if it's flared or split. So to remove the nozzle from the Eclipse, take the handle off so that you can remove the needle, loosen that, pull the needle out, remove your air cap, then the housing. This is all just finger tight. And then you can see it's pretty much the same configuration if you just look at it like this and you can just unscrew the front using the nozzle wrench. And if you think that there is paint stuck within your nozzle, you can carefully use the needle and just sort of push up against the cone very carefully without scratching it. So extremely careful, but that will help to push out any of that dried up paint and free up your nozzle. You'll kind of feel it if you push your needle in there and you don't see it popping out the front like this. It might just stop there or feel spongy, then you know some of that paint has dried up in there and you're gonna have to get it out. But be very, very careful doing this because you can can damage your nozzle. If on the other hand it's flared or split then you're going to see that within this area here and you'll definitely notice it when you're airbrushing. So before I show you the entire nozzle setup I'm just going to show you the method of finding the thread using your fingers only and using the nozzle wrench fit that over the front screw it on and that's pretty much tightened up. But if you want to have a good look you remove this housing as well which is the head assembly and now you can see how the Eclipse runs a different nozzle. Wiggle that around a little bit and that should come off. And you can see you've almost got a nozzle similar to what the Pash VLs run, except it's got that other smaller one which screws on the top. So that's the main difference between the Eclipse and a lot of the other brushes. So sometimes you might find you'll need to clean in there as well. You can see this one isn't super spotless, but the airbrush is definitely working well. Fit it back on, carefully put the head assembly back on, so you only really need to take this part off if you suspect that you need to do a deep clean with the Eclipse. And that fits back over the front. And now you can just airbrush as is once you put your needle back in. Slide that in. Make sure your needle is poking out. You'll definitely notice if it's like that that you've got a blockage issue. So then you have to remove the nozzle again and check out what's going on. Tighten your locking nut. Put the handle back on and you're back ready to paint. I like having the air cap off as it just allows for easier removal of tip drying, which happens over time. And if you've been airbrushing for a while, you've definitely encountered tip drying. You can also paint with the air cap on, which does make it safer if you drop your airbrush. You're not gonna be likely to bend the needle and damage the nozzle. So there you have it, a few useful tips for how to remove that nozzle, what to look out for if you are having trouble. And to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.